Okay, so um, so we're about three minutes after, um, and for the folks who just kind of hopped on, um, you know, a minute or so ago, just was mentioning, uh, uh, catching up with Leah here at the top. Um, uh, so for, for, for folks who, uh, I think most folks who are hopping on the call with the exception of maybe Dan and, uh, and others, a um, few others, uh, know that Leah and I are the co-chairs for the infrastructure interest group. Um, so, so Dan, it's great to have you on board as a, you know, sort of a first time attendee and, you know, hope you'll hang in there um, over the course of the, the next year. Um, are there any other folks hopping on the call? This is our first time joining the infrastructure interest group. Yeah, this is, this is my first time. This is Clayton Minsky. Um, I'm here. I'm a brand new digital preservation archivist from Clemson University. So um, I was told to hop on the call, see what you guys are about. And I'm sure I'll be interested in what you're, <laughs> what you'll be talking about over the next year or so. Um, hope, to get, hope to get more involved um, as we kind of develop our digital preservation program at Clemson. So it's, it's a brand new program. So it's my, my job to kind of build it from the, from the ground. <laughs> when, did, uh, when did you hop on board with Clemson? Uh, May 1st. Me um, wow, what a, time, what a time to be, both, both right. you and Dan, what a time to be, you know, to diving into this work. Right. Yeah, I'm actually up here. Um, I'm in Delaware still, so I've been working remotely. I haven't even been able to move down to South Carolina, so. <laughs> wow. <Right. laughs> this is Leah. Welcome, Clayton, and welcome, Dan. Great to be here. Thank you. Why don't we, um, so, since we've got such a, you know, uh, a tight, like I said, what I was saying uh, at the top of the call here is uh, we, right at, as we're holding this session right now, um, uh, the Best Practices Exchange, which is, uh, you know, an increasingly popular conference, uh, annual conference, uh, they, are, they are running Monday through Wednesday this, uh, this week. So several of the folks who, um, who normally join our infrastructure interest group calls are undoubtedly uh, attending that virtual conference. Uh, so we, we're, we're likely to have a fairly light call. Um, combined with uh, the fact that, you know, we really just got the, um, the reminder out um, as of this morning for today's uh, call. And fo folks hopefully know that um, the infrastructure interest group meets every third Monday um, at, uh, at 12 p.m. Eastern time, or uh, sorry, 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so it's a very predictable uh, time and a lot of folks have it in their calendars. Um, and, we, and we typically get the reminders out the week beforehand. Um, things have just been a scramble. I, and Leah, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I can certainly say for myself, things have been a bit of a scramble um, the past several weeks. Um, so apologies uh, from, from my side of things for the reminder not going out until this morning. Yeah, for me as well. And it's just here, I'm at Georgetown University and uh, it's just been crazy. And we're, you know, the university's trying to figure out where it's going financially at this point. And so uh, we're, in the middle of, as a matter of fact, today is the day for uh, people to volunteer for furloughing. And so it's just been, it's just been crazy. <laughs> yeah, and, and Leah, really uh, appreciate you just kind of giving us a window into how things are moving uh, there on your end. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. I think a lot of universities are at least in the same place that we are. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are kind of in the same boat with just trying to figure out from day to day what's happening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and for, for my part, you know, I'd, uh, this, this past week, I really had to kind of take uh, most of the week off to handle a whole bunch of logistics with, uh, with my son graduating uh, this, past, this past week and getting things set up for his, um, his college experience uh, next week. And so jug juggling the home front and the duties on the home front with, with work has gotten, um, yeah. has, has gotten challenging uh, in these times. So, um, well, why don't, uh, be, since we've got a little bit of time, like I said, I think we'll be wrapping up a bit early uh, today, but do want to have some good discussion about uh, some topics that we can uh, queue up uh, in the, the next quarter of time that we have uh, to be hosting monthly calls. Um, but uh, be, before we sort of dive into the agenda proper, uh, seeing as how we have uh, a fairly small number of folks on the call, why don't we just go around uh, the virtual table real quick um, and say a little bit about, about who we are. So we've heard from Clayton and Dan already. Um, I'll just say real quickly, um, so I'm Matt Schultz. I'm the Director of Digital Curation and Preservation at the Educopia Institute. Um, we work with several different um, uh, communities that are, that are focused on advancing uh, digital preservation. Uh, the Bit Curator Consortium and Meta Archive in particular. 
Um, also do work with the Software Preservation Network and uh, the Library Publishing Coalition. Um, uh, Leah, do you want to just say real quick again uh, your, your title sure. and your responsibilities? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm the Associate Director for Digital Initiatives and Special Collections here at Georgetown Law Library. So we're separate from the main university. But uh, yeah, as you can probably guess, I'm responsible for all of our digitization efforts, um, our digital repositories. I'm responsible for our digital preservation, which is my connection with NDSA, uh, as well as our special collections department, um, both online and offline. So pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and, and Leah gave a great um, uh, presentation just a couple months back here on the amazing work uh, that you all are doing with uh, getting your, uh, you know, your, your repository uh, technology stack integrated with Google Cloud. Um, Cloud yeah, stack. hopefully be continuing to uh, refine that and have more to talk about in the future about that, about trying to get uh, fixity and uh, in the way that archivists need fixity tracking to be able to do that in a cloud provider like Google, so. Nice. Well, and then, uh, you know, looking down the list here, um, Don, uh, Don Gorley, um, can we have you introduce yourself real quick? And then uh, we'll just keep working down the list and um, have folks say hi. Hi, I'm, I'm Don Gorley. I'm the Director of Information Technology at the Washington Research Library Consortium. We've been struggling to deploy um, Archivematica and Meta Archive for our partners amid um, various competing priorities and most recently, of course, the whole uh, online learning and, and instruction switch. Yeah, Don, Don can, you, um, can, you, can you say a little bit more about um, how, that, how, that's, how that's looking, how that rollout's going for you all? Are you, are you guys um, sort of getting over some of the initial hurdle of that, that ramp up? Uh, I would say no. <laughs> uh, it, the problem is that we, well, the, the archive Matica part to, to build a, a preservation archive, if you have any experience with that, it's, it's pretty complicated uh, software to administer. It's a lot of, it's a lot of maintenance on the, as is meta archive admittedly. And, you know, I, I work directly with you and the other members there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's challenging. And, and when you get um, a few moments to work on it and then a week goes by before you can get back to it, uh, it's very, it makes it more difficult and, um, to keep to any schedule. Yeah, absolutely. But we do expect, um, I'm telling my boss that we will have it, uh, ready by the end of the summer. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, let's keep going down the list here. So, uh, Luke, do you want to say hi real quick and, and also get a chance to work with Luke on a regular basis? Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Luke Menzies. I'm a digital preservation technologist at Virginia Tech. Um, and I, they, they hired me on a three-year contract to help jumpstart the preservation program. Uh, and so uh, we actually had Archivematica to begin with. And after a while, we decided to move away from that into uh, more homegrown. And so now uh, we have the digital library platform, which uh, we're building on Amazon Web Services, so it'll be a cloud-based, you know, API-first kind of uh, system. And now that my contract is actually, um, I was just telling um, Matt, now that my contract's coming up, I'm actually back on the job market. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I, th I think that's, that's us at Tech. Do you, Luke, do you have, uh, like, uh, not to put you on the spot, but do you have, um, you know, sort of a, a, ta a main takeaway from your time and your experience, you know, doing this work um, over the past three years? Anything that's kind of coalescing as a insight into, you know, like how, how other institutions can yeah. move forward and make progress? Um, that, that's a good question, actually. Um, I mean, I feel like I could write a book <laughs> about how... Uh, <laughs> You know, at the very least, with, you should. <laughs> working in libraries is uh, there's so much that you don't learn in uh, library school, and my initial experience was very hands-on and uh, kind of 
I could control every aspect. You know, if I wanted to spin up this, I could spin it up. Or if I wanted to uh, test something out, I could just do it. But uh, working with a larger team, um, I think, has been uh, a challenge and also a learning experience. So, you know, multiple people, different expertise. And I guess the main takeaway there that I've learned is uh, initially I thought, well, if we each do our own job well, then it'll all work fine. But there's this, this aspect of digital preservation, I think that it's a uh, sum of the parts, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts kind of thing where right. we each have to understand not only our own specific specialty, but also like, how does that work with so-and-so and how does that work with uh, this, this other uh, component over here? And I think that's been uh, really a learning experience, figuring out how to work with humans, you know, because the technology, <laughs> the computer does what I tell it to do. <laughs> right. The, uh, the humans don't always want to do, you know, they have their uh, minds of their own, so to speak. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, uh, and just uh, learning about getting the whole machine kind of working and all of the various components that are, you know, beyond the software and beyond the hardware, the various uh, administrative and policy type and, you know, any number of things, but getting that entire beast to move in the right direction has been fun. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, and I totally, uh, I can totally relate to that. You know, I, I really do. I've uh, had sort of burning in the back of my mind, you know, trying to pen, you know, some, um, I don't know, some some articles of some kind to kind of poke at that that tension that there is between you know you know someone who's a digital preservation digital preservationist archivist curator you know that specialization that we you know I think uh, in some ways we we want to protect unto ourselves um, you know and get better and better at all the time that the, the collaborative aspects of this you know kind of hold that that to some tension um, and you know trying to trying to you know satisfy both of those things can be challenging. Um, in this field. Yeah. And advo advo sorry, advocacy kind of takes on a new, a new meaning because, you know, you're, you know, uh, like I, I know just enough IT to get in trouble in IT and just enough on the collections management and um, curatorial <laughs> side to get in trouble there and kind of trying to bridge these two worlds that are so very different. Um, and then also like, uh, advocating for digital preservation with people who are really good at their specific um, fields, but don't necessarily, um, they don't have the same assumptions that you, you have as a preservationist or a digital preservation person. Right, right. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, sort of managing, you know, sort of labor and progress on top of labor and progress. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's, let's move on to, uh, so can we uh, have Martin say hi real quick? Martin Kong? Hi, can everybody hear me? Yeah, yep, gotcha. Okay, so I'm Martin Kong. I'm the systems librarian at Chicago State University. Um, we are, did our digital preservation is actually handled in our archives uh, unit, but I work with them in terms of some, some of the infrastructure parts, the, the backend storage and things like that, that we do locally. Um, we actually do have, we, we subscribe to Preservica and right. I am aware that they're, they're working on finalizing sort of the rollout to our campus. Um, they're, they're piloting a couple of different units right now to see, um, how it will work in terms of just getting the whole campus on the digital preservation is, is a big thing to do. So, mm, right, um, right, right. So they're just setting up some of the initial steps and, and working through it. And I'll, I help with whatever they need locally, of course, with Preservica being in the cloud, but not everything will go on the cloud. We know that not everything can fit in there, of course, too. So, um, so there'll be some things that we'll be handling locally as well. So nice. That's great. Thanks, Martin. Um, okay, and then let's see here. Um, can we hear from Sean Buckner? Hello, this is Sean Buckner. I'm uh, at Texas A&M University, the big one in College Station. 
and um, I'm the essentially I'm the digital preservation librarian. Uh, my title now is coordinator of digital preservation and digitization. So I have some oversight over our digitization uh, work in our lab. Um, that's kind of just brought me more into the digital project stuff. But I, I basically do run the digital preservation program. We're an Archimatica shop. So I've had Archimatica up and running for a few years now. Um, we don't use every feature of it. We do a lot of the work beforehand. So basically, basically it's just kind of like an ape creator and, and uh, does the kind of the, those microservices. Um, but I don't use it as much for the archival side. Um, and then we uh, we do a lot of work with uh, a lot of work with TDL. Um, this is last last month we heard from Courtney. Is that correct, Matt? Is that yeah, that's right. Yep. I was trying to make sure I'm in the right meeting. Um, <laughs> so it was last month. So Courtney Muma is. Uh, I do a lot of work with her at TDL. We run our uh, Dura Cloud instance. Uh, we use theirs, uh, and I push a lot of my, a lot of the data I push to the cloud, either to Chronopolis or to. Amazon Web Services, Glacier, basically, um, sort of my tiered approach for different types of content. And so um, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of our, uh, our current workflow and what we're, we're doing, but um, it's a large institution. There's a lot of, a lot of work to do here. Um, I've been here about five years now uh, at A&M. Do, uh, do you get a chance to, um, to do anything with regards to like the Texas data repository? Uh, good question. Uh, I, I actually was a part of the initial uh, implementation of the Texas Digital Repository, which is bas basically Dataverse instance. Um, but we do have a data uh, data librarian who who so that most of that is for um, faculty research and other data uh, data sets. So I, I don't um, TDL is doing most of the digital preservation work on that side. So I, I don't really deal much with that one. Um, kind of just out on the outskirts a little bit of, of working with that. But most of what I work with is uh, content that we've digitized or our special collections, digital born stuff that comes in uh, through through our special collections library. Nice. nice. And what is the, so what has the situation been like with your dig digitization unit um, with the with the downturn? Yeah, the, nothing's being digitized as of now. So we still have a lot of legacy stuff, a lot of things that were, were and digital projects that were digitized previously and we're now just doing the work to either put up online or, and or continue to preserve that content, describe it and so forth. But correct, there's no, uh, I, I, was in the, uh, I was in the office on Friday to receive a new scanner and uh, have our other ones uh, serviced. So I did, I did get to wear my mask and go in on Friday. But there are no students, no no one's in the lab currently digitizing right now. So kind of on shutdown on that side. Yeah, yeah, I've been interested to kind of check in with um, with folks uh, that you know are, are running their their digitization units to see whether or not there's been any opportunity to kind of get on site and do anything from institution to institution. Um, so that's that's appreciate the report out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I see Terry, Terry Brady. Hi, I'm Terry Brady with the California Digital Library. I'm the tech lead for the merit preservation system. So I've uh, been working here about six months. Um, I've sort of loosely worked in this space for uh, a number of years. I was a developer at the Georgetown Main Library. We um, worked on a few projects with Leah and then uh, we were sort of a, a client of um, AP Trust uh, mm -hmm. for our content. So had a, had a little bit of experience being the user of a preservation system and then now uh, being the maintainer of one. Uh, so a lot of the you know, work that I've been doing in the last few months is kind of uh, you know, sort of being new to the team, figuring out how to, how to make the code and the system um, more testable and also find ways to you know, more powerfully leverage some of our uh, cloud service capabilities like we're we're right now in the process of uh rolling out delivery of large objects with um, pre-signed urls so taking some of the load off of our applications and letting the redirecting clients um, to amazon for the download of um, big objects so it's been a been a fun play you know fun set of stuff to be learning about yeah and that's i mean all of that work is going to be constantly evolving and moving um, so you'll you'll have some some cool things to do um, on an ongoing basis here. Do you get a chance to to work with um, with Dan at UC Berkeley? 
Um, and that's a question to you too, Dan. Have you had a chance to No, not directly. I, d I was just noting, uh, Terry, we have David Moles working on our team. I know he used to work at CDL. Do you guys know each other? You know, we met as I was applying. So he, I, I have his job now. And Dan, I attended ah. a talk you gave on Docker that was really informative uh, two or three months ago. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So then someday I want to pick your brain for some more info. Yeah. Just wanted to say hi, Terry. Yeah, Leah. good to good to see you, Leah. You too. That's great. Okay, and then I think um, uh, we've got Walker and uh, and then Brenda. Walker, do you want to say hi real quick? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Walker Sampson. I'm a, a digital archivist at uh, CU Boulder uh, Libraries. I've uh, been working there for about seven years now. And um, I also uh, serve at the Big Curator Consortium, although um, that's uh, we've been able to get that membership renewed this year. So actually that work will be drawing down, unfortunately. And um, yeah, we, we've been part of NDSA for about a year now. Um, have been kind of away from the infrastructure group, unfortunately, uh, just because of general chaos, but um, was also serving on the, um, on a couple of groups that were revising the uh, uh, levels of preservation for the, for the big version two rollout. So that was, that was fun to do. Um, as far as what we're doing at Boulder, um, we are set up with Archivum um, for our uh, preservation storage. And uh, at the moment, we're moving through a big upgrade with them to their new version, um, which will have a kind of a new interface and, and dashboard. Um, and um, uh, prior to that, uh, we had been using Archivematica as kind of the interface to their, to their service. Um, we're also moving over to Sam Vera probably soon as a digital repository, and we use A Space as the finding aid. So I'm always looking for better and better integrations between those three systems. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's a, about it on my end. Walker, well, uh, what how how are things feeling with uh, the Sam Vera? Um, community at the moment if there's if I can get you just to, to kind of weigh in on um, uh, the activities there how, how have things been proceeding yeah um, I'm afraid I can't comment t t too much on it because I'm still kind of uh, learning the ropes here and getting better integrated into the community that uh, the situation here is that we used Sam Vera to replace B press which was running our institutional repository, right. which I don't um, work with much, um, but that was a successful transition. And so I'm serving on a group now that's basically just trying to find out if we can do that again for our general purpose digital repository. Um, from so you, you, I, had I, a, you, you had a nice yeah. stable rollout for your IR replacement then. Yes, we did. Yeah, that's and we run San Vera locally, so there's some technical proficiency here that's been built up to do that, which is, you know, fantastic. Right. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah. Okay, and then um, shall we uh, shall we turn to Brenda? Brenda, do you want to say hi? From Clemson. Yep, I can. Sorry, I was just trying to find my unmute button here. <laughs> so. Um, I think you probably already heard from Clayton. I see he's in yeah. there also. But Clemson, I am Brenda Burke. I'm head of special collections and archives at Clemson University. And we're new members to NDSA. We just joined recently. So actually with the kind of the work from home type, it's been a little bit quieter that I can actually start seeing what NDSA is all about. So I've been going in on the various interest groups. But one of the things is, is that as probably Clayton mentioned, mentioned is he's our new digital and preservation archivist and so we are looking at how we can start our program here at Clemson University so just in this little bit of introduction and hearing what people are doing and the different types of things have gave me lots of ideas and questions so I'm glad that this group is available. 
Yeah, that's great. And it's, you know, uh, I had a chance to, um, not in this current iteration uh, with Educopia working with, uh, with Meta Archive, uh, Clemson did used to be a, a member of Meta Archive. And I remember, you know, working with the library um, some years back and you all are just fantastic mm -hmm. to work with. Um, so it's great to have you on board. That's good to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, um, uh, why don't we go ahead, we want to get to the, you know, to um, the space of the call where we can, you know, talk a little bit about what's of interest to you all for uh, topics moving forward for us to, to reach out and pull some experts in to, to speak to, um, or, you know, if you have some, some other ideas for how we can spend our time on these monthly calls, um, we can talk through some of that. Um, this is, you know, this is a nice, good critical mass to, to have some discussion. Um, on the remainder of the call here, just uh, so we can get through some of the updates real quick. Um, I'll touch on those and um, I'm going to go ahead and put the link to our agenda and minutes in the, the chat here so everybody can have a peek at what I'm seeing. Um, give me one second. Okay, so if you want to pop that link open if you're not there already, it looks like mo most people are probably in the document already. Um, the, I think the things to highlight, you know, um, NDSA wide uh, would be, I hope folks saw um, uh, go out on the listserv from Bradley um, that uh, the leadership team, the coordinating committee has put together a, a very, very brief uh, emergency digital preservation needs uh, survey. And this is really um, a shout out to the membership to have um, your institutions weigh in and, you know, certainly to forward the link on to any other institutions that you think would benefit from. Um, providing some feedback to uh, to the NDSA to 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 get some of the the critical needs on um, everyone's map and radar within the community for um, how the the uh, the pandemic is is impacting operations at uh, and impacting you know sustainability for uh, both digital and physical collections um, at uh, collecting preserving institutions. So I've gone ahead. Uh, uh, so Educopia, from my standpoint, you know, we um, we're not we're not filling out the survey the way uh, most of the institutions might. But I did have a chance to kind of step through the the survey. It is very brief um, and it's very open ended. So it's really you know asking institutions to respond, um, you know, with their uh, with their experience, like what they're what they're seeing, some of the changing needs are. Uh, as they as they head further into um, the situation that we're in right now, and and particularly you know as we're facing you know very very quickly uh, changing dynamics in terms of uh, economics and sustainability for operations and staffing and whatnot at, at institutions. So if you get a chance to fill that out, if it's you know if it seems like it would be helpful. Uh, to contribute your perspectives into the conversation, um, I would uh, I would expect that that the leadership team of the coordinating committee will um, be bringing uh, the the findings from this survey forward um, and the, through the several different channels that we that we have in place within the community um, in the short term and and um, you know and hopefully be fostering some good conversations around this within our within our um, alliance as we head into the later parts of the year and, you know, start to um, convene for our annual meeting. Um, so uh, feel free to, to pop into that survey, feel free to forward it on to institutions that you think would benefit from reporting into it. And I, and I think that that, um, uh, Leah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you're seeing you know, something different, I'm not sure, but I think, you know, this is something that, that uh, could certainly go out well beyond uh, the chain of NDSA to institutions that, um, that are in need. So yeah. Um, so Feel free to forward on. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the discussion that sort of brought this forward, uh, there was actually particular interest in making sure small institutions uh, might be able to fill it out, you know, historical societies and, you know, people uh, or organizations who might not have a membership in NDSA. So it, it really isn't meant to be. And that it, you know, my sense from the conversation was that it's information gathering at this point, but it's for very pragmatic reasons, not, uh, you know, not academic reasons. So, yeah, the more people who can fill it out, the I think the better the community can respond to those needs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, you know, I guess uh, just we'll put a we'll put a pin in this um, when we get around to talking about um, uh, agenda topics for this next quarter into the summer. Um, definitely want to circle around. We've already got some things uh, on the radar from this past winter that that uh, some infrastructure interest group uh, members put forward as as possible topics uh, in in the the vein of uh, uh, 
this, this particular emergency that we're going through that I think are relevant um, and we can circle around to those. Um, but I think, you know, trying to, you know, focus on how uh, the, uh, the, the experience that our institutions are, are going through uh, through this this particular period are are impacting operations and infrastructure. Uh, there's there's certainly things we can probably queue up over the course of the next few months uh, to to surface some case studies and uh, and hear from some of our member institutions about what that's looking like. Uh, so we can we can um, we can touch on that. Uh, so we make a point uh, during the admin updates uh, for our interest group, to, uh, you know, where, where we have had some new applications and some approval for applications for membership, uh, just uh, calling attention to those those new members uh, that have been uh, accepted into the alliance. And uh, so this at this past meeting, uh, there were there were two new members that were approved um, for NDSA, and that's uh, the archivist organization. Um, I've included a link there. Um, you can go ahead and uh, click through to their site, uh, and then the University of Baltimore Library. So, uh, just like we're we're seeing uh, folks from uh, uh, we're seeing Dan and Clayton and Brenda come in from Clemson and uh, Berkeley uh, this month, having just joined last month. Um, you know, we we hope to see some of the folks from Archivist and University of Baltimore Library on the call um, in the in the following month or over the course of the summer here, um, and we'll certainly reach out to them and invite invite them to join. Um, so that's great. Um, and then I think the, the other, and Lee, I want to invite you to feel free to add to this, this list, but uh, this is what I, you know, sort of put on the, uh, on the list to, to make sure we cover. Uh, there is a, uh, sorry, I should have noted that this is the, uh, oops, this, uh, this next agenda topic is the DLF um, program review. Uh, they are hosting a webinar to cover the details of the report that were just delivered back to, to DLF. Um, uh, about about um, DLF's operations and sustainability and um, the various programs and communities that um, that are shepherded by DLF. Uh, so they, they're actually going to be holding a, um, a webinar uh, that you can register for. We have a link to that in the agenda. You can submit some questions ahead of time um, and they've issued some information about the, the report and the details of the report that they'll be covering during the the webinar. So I just wanted to make sure to get that on everybody's uh, radar and they can, you know, if they have time this Wednesday, um, go ahead and register and sign up for, for that webinar. Um, that's all I had for admin updates. Um, Leah, did you have anything else that you wanted to make sure to cover? I, you had a chance to kind of uh, attend the coordinating committee leadership team um, call this past week and I was not able to. So I'm just kind of pulling some of the more salient things from the notes there. But um, think... Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm sort of going off. Uh off the fly from the fly here um yeah. but there's a initiative about um trying to determine whether ndsa um could sponsor projects that ndsa is actually not part of so there's oh, right. a yeah there's a conversation going on around that um like i said i should have put that in there and thought more about how to describe it, but uh, I, th I think like, thing like, like um, grants and, and projects. Yes, is, yeah. Right? There's a there's a particular project that uh, is sort of a use case for this, and uh, so that's something that the uh, the leadership team is discussing as well. Um, I don't I don't know that there's anything to point people to at this point, but. Uh, perhaps soon. And this has to do with uh, highlighting certain programs and, and sort of DLF, I mean, uh, NDSA being the home of a project, even though the project wasn't an NDSA project, but that uh, is very relevant. So we'll, we'll see where that's coming from. But uh, that's all I can think of from uh, the meeting. So yeah, I think the, uh, the, the, the sort of pilot proposal for a project resource is coming from the beyond the repository. Uh, yes. Project. And uh, yeah. that, it's, it's a, um, from my standpoint, a very legitimate, you know, question to, to ask, um, you know, whether a project like that, that has such broad, you know, applicability to um, NDSA members, you know, can and should be um, hosted uh, by, by our national association. 
Um, so I, I'm, I'm really appreciative that, that they've, you know, put that forward. And um, yeah, it's, get, it's getting, you know, very, very careful um, review in terms of, I think the, the concern, you know, is primarily, you know, can, is it, is it reasonable to suspect that um, the NDSA can um, maintain and upkeep um, all of the ancillary uh, information around, um, you know, contextualizing and um, disseminating these sorts of resources over time, whether that's, whether that's um, practical and, um, and uh, inappropriate. So it's, they're, they're giving it really good review. I've been, I've been impressed. Yep. <laughs> okay, do, um, do folks have any questions about any of those updates or um, have uh, other things come across folks' radar that they want to make sure that they share in the, you know, sort of the space of um, the, you know, just of relevance to uh, everyone's um, membership uh, involvement with NDSA? Any questions that we can, that Lee and I can help carry forward to the leadership team? No? Okay. All right. Well, um, so really the goal of this, uh, this meeting is to, you know, just check in with everybody. And, you know, I guess, first of all, for those folks who have been able to attend uh, the, the interest group calls over the first part of the year here, um, does anybody have any sort of feedback or, you know, questions or comments on, on how those topics have um, uh, been, been pulled together, um, have been uh, presented? To folks, um, there there is a link at the the top of the agenda. Folks can get to the um, to the YouTube channel where we uh, and Leah. I, I want to make sure to to call attention to all the great work that you have done uh, in the first part of this year here to to make those videos available um, after the conclusion of every every month's call. So thank you so much for getting those put up on YouTube. But um, we've got a nice record of the presentations. Yeah, no problem at all. And if like the last last meeting, I didn't realize that I had missed, missed one. So uh, with all the craziness going on, if you're not seeing one go up within a week or so after the meeting, feel free to let me know. It probably fell through the cracks for me and I, you know, I'm happy to do it, uh, but I might need a, a ping every now and then. So. Right. <clears throat> And I'll just say, you know, for, for both of our parts, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased and, and proud that we were able, we were really able to cover most of the, you know, sort of hot topics that, that trickled to the top of the poll and the voting uh, coming into this year. So for, for folks that need a little bit of a rewind and a recap, the link that's in the, the agenda here to the, the Tricitor, um, the everything that you're seeing sort of trickled to the top there, uh, that was, those were topics that were initially brought forward uh, at the um, the DigiPres uh, conference in Florida uh, this past fall, um, we carried the the poll into the the um, early calls of this year and asked all of the um, in infrastructure interest group uh, members to to weigh in on what was of interest to 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 hear some some presentation about from some ex experts in the community. Um, and, and really, for the most part, all of the ones that, you know, got that the six, five, you know, four um, uh, rating support, we've, we've managed to cover a lot of ground in the, the first uh, uh, four calls of the, the year here. So, um, and as, as Leah said, you know, folks can, can go to the YouTube channel and, uh, and drop in on all those. Um, and, and we have, you know, we have some really, really good topics that, that we have not yet gotten to that have, have gotten some good uh, voting and support in the poll as well. Um, so we can we can talk through some of those if if they're of interest. But I'm you know Leah, I, uh, I I don't know. I think you and I you know we managed to to reach out to all the right people for for these topics so far. And, and Strong arm enough people. <laughs> right and yeah uh, to to their credit, I mean they were they were very eager and willing to to present oh. on the topics and did such a great job, uh, your, yourself included. So the the topic on fixity with Google was was a great presentation. Yeah, no, I, I'm totally joking. Everybody's been very gracious about being willing to, uh, to, to run one of the sessions. I'm wondering if, um, you know, certainly if people have ideas in this call, that's great. We'll, we should get them down. But I'm also wondering if we should just create a new list and take out the things that have already been covered, see what's left, invite people to add more or let us know to add more. And then maybe go through another round of voting. Does that sound like a reasonable, I mean, I think we should continue to talk in this meeting, but does that sound like a, a good way to go forward with all this? Anybody? 
Well, I'm reacting with the thumbs up. I think that makes a lot yes, of sense. Yes, I appreciate to me. that. I like <laughs> I've only just started realizing you can use reactions in Zoom, so <laughs> it's a blessing uh, and a curse that there are only two. Yes, I know. I wish there were more. Uh, anybody think that's a bad idea? Let's put it that way. Or anybody see anything in particular on the list that they're they want to make a point to speak? to and, and uh, say they're particularly interested in? So I'm actually going through the previous agendas. Was, the, uh, was there ever a discussion on cloud uh, storage cost estimation? Yeah, there was in the fall. OK. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it was in the I think it was yeah, Kate, Kate Doey from uh, University of Maryland and um, and that, the other name is escaping Ju me. Julian Morley from Stanford. Yes. He did. Yeah, he yeah. did a great, great breakdown. Of yeah. Pop. So I think that was November or December. I can't remember, but yeah, just go back a little further and you should find it. I did. Uh, so in full transparency, I did, uh, given some of the remaining topics on the list, um, I did reach out to a couple of uh, people in particular. Um, so I, just the first one, just for verification to see if I was even, you know, sort of barking up the right tree um, and reaching out to the right person. Uh, I did. So folks will see there's a topic on the list for exit strategies, which I, you know, I, I don't know all of what was, you know, sort of, um, uh, envisioned for that topic necessarily, um, but given um, you know sort of the the state of things right now and some of the hard place um, that institutions are finding themselves in, um, you know with sustainability, uh, uh, I I did reach out to Linda Tadek, who I think is the one who proposed that topic, um, and just uh, checked in to see you know whether or not um, if she is the one that that put that forward originally, whether she has any interest in you know or either herself or, um, you know, proposing someone to reach out to uh, that we can, we can maybe spend some time over the course of the next few months talking a little bit about how institutions are, are approaching uh, change um, and sustainability um, and, you know, where uh, it looks like, you know, they're having to make some pretty seismic shifts in terms of their directions um, and solutions, you know, what those exit strategies are looking like. Um, so I did reach out to Linda. Uh, and then on the topic of uh, blockchain and uh, digital preservation, I uh, recently had a conversation with uh, Ben Fino Radin from uh, Small Data Industries. And I don't know if folks have uh, caught wind of the work that they're doing with, uh, with file cluing in an application that they're looking to develop uh, that would work with file cluing, but it's basically like a sort of a blockchain approach to digital preservation. Um, so I did reach out, reach out to Ben, uh, and we'll see if he has any interest. Um, that's that's yeah. not to sort of you know sort of lock these topics in, but um, just to make sure that we're, you know, we're we're reaching out to some of the folks that have already expressed interest in topics. You know, I'm looking at the bot. I'm looking at the things at the bottom of the list, and now that we've covered some of the more immediate topics, and I wouldn't even say they were of more interest; they were just more immediate. I'm looking at the ones down on the bottom and it's like, I would really, really like to know more about what all of those nines mean. And I would really, really like to know more about uh, containerization. I know Dan, you had said, yeah, right. yeah, I, I would really like to know more about those things. So, and then the other thing that I was just thinking is a couple of years ago, I was working with someone who had taken over, um, <sighs> A number of years ago, somebody from the DC General Counsel's office approached us about whether Georgetown had some uh, solutions for them for preserving their code, for get, uh, preserving their uh, computer code, for getting legal code online. And uh, that person ended up uh, leaving the General Counsel's office and they ended up hiring a, um, an outside consultant and he, they ended up using some kind of solution. I had several conversations with him, but he's way beyond what I'm used to working with. And, but it was something uh, either blockchain or blockchain-like. Oh, interesting. And I'd be happy to reach out to him and see if he might be interested in talking about the project that they're doing. Because it's, it's related to the preservation of, of code for publishing legal code. Uh, and people might find that interesting. So, 
Oh, and absolutely. It's, yeah, it's related. It's It's got some kind of blockchain-like strategy. So I, I can reach out to him as well. Okay, that's great. Are there, so are there other topics of interest uh, just offhand that we can catch? Yeah, yeah for me, I, I think just hearing how people do system testing for their repositories would be um, an interesting topic. One of the things I've been kind of delighted to find, we, we started using um, Minio as one of our storage solutions and that comes available as a Docker container. And so I'm starting to imagine, you know, some possibilities to build a suite of tests where we could essentially, you know, destroy the cloud storage in this Minio container at the start of a test, run through a whole suite, you know, build it up and then destroy it at the end. And I'm, I'd be curious just to learn what lessons folks have learned trying to build like a more sophisticated test suite for their repositories. So, so Terry, do you think that, um, like, and, and I really want to, you know, sort of, we've had uh, the way that we've approached these, um, these, th these calls over the first part of the year, like we, folks have come in with, uh, you know, some, um, some, some presentation slides, you know, queued up, or, or, you know, a set of critical questions to, to talk through, and it's, you know, it's, it's been sort of semi-formal. Um, Terry, I just want to, you know, sort of encourage you, like, we, uh, if you're interested in exploring this, you know, in a, in a very open-ended way um, within the context of the interest group here, um, you know, thinking of ahead to the schedule here, um, even just, you know, sort of fostering conversation around what you're, you're thinking of, um, just want to encourage you to feel free to, you know, to, to step up and, um, you know, look ahead to the schedule and Lee and, uh, Lee and I can work with you on this, but just to give you a chance to check in with this, this community on, along these lines. Um, Happy to help facilitate that. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah. How about other folks? Okay. Well, um, so uh, Leah, shall you and I get together and you know pull together a you know a fresh poll, incorporate some of these um, sure. remaining topics, and then just leave the the door open for folks to propose some new topics and go through a round of voting. Yeah, so I just, it just occurred to me, I should be putting some of these things down in the notes. So I put down blockchain, uh, put down container computing, lessons learned from building sophisticated test suites. Is that what you just said, Terry? Uh, yeah, kind I, of strategies for building up a, a test suite, you know, particularly for uh, repository and preservation repository. Okay. Uh, and, and Terry, are you seeing uh, Dan's uh, follow up? I am. Yeah, nice. Okay. So please feel free to add other um, other topics that we might have just covered and I didn't get into the notes. Uh, but yeah, even after this meeting, feel free to go in and just add some things. And then, yeah, I think that's a good idea, Matt, for you and I to just then get together and organize them and put them into some sort of uh, survey form. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, so uh, Terry and Dan in particular, um, if, if, if either of you are not interested in, you know, sort of um, uh, taking center stage uh, around this particular topic, if there are some other uh, folks both in the field or outside of the field um, that you'd like us to, or, you know, you want to help us um, reach out to, to pull in, to speak to some of these issues, just let us know. Um, and we can we can do some of that legwork. Um, I, in particular, I mean, I think I just I really appreciate you know that we have um, folks like you who um, have some some broad deep experience both in uh, our library field and outside of our library field, uh, and and you know uncertain uh, undoubtedly some good connections and network um, beyond libraries uh, of folks who have some expertise in you know these these software um, strategies and approaches that we're taking now in uh, in library land if there's any outside you know um, expertise or perspectives that uh, that we can bring in you know to speak to the to our community that would be fantastic so just let us know if you can think of anybody good thanks yeah and yeah if i feel <laughs> if i feel like i've got something coherent to uh put together and, and kick off a conversation with i'll be glad to volunteer for that yeah that's great thank you yeah, I, I've spoken on uh, Docker and Kubernetes and Swarm in the past, and 
I'd be happy to if there was interest in the group, but it is more of a software development focus. Um, so it's like general purpose foundational stuff, not specific to libraries, though there are a lot of applications. I'm, I'm fine with that personally, but other people can speak up if they're not. Well, I think that, um, you know, it, it, uh, if nothing else, it'll be a really good exercise in translation, you know, like you're just coming at that information in whatever way makes sense to you. Like, I think, um, you know, it's, it's just part of the work that we have to do as a, as a community of professionals, we have to bridge some of those, those gaps. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm confident, uh, however you wanted to approach that information and set up that, that topic, uh, Dan, we could, you know, between Lee and I and some of the other folks on the call, um, you know, we could, we could talk through some of that. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Okay, well, um, so do folks have any other um, any other topics or you know questions or issues that they'd like to to cover before we you know sort of move in that direction? Okay, great, Lee. Did you have anything else that that you wanted to cover? No, I think that I think uh, the main purpose for this meeting today we we did cover, and that's great. I think we have some good ideas to follow through, follow up on. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and it was great to hear a little bit from everybody about where they're coming from, and you know some of the things that they're working on. Uh, you know, in this particular mm -hmm. moment. So, um, really appreciate everybody sharing. I just want to say, everybody, hang in there. <laughs> hope yeah, you know, absolutely. take a deep breath, and hope hope things go well for you. Well, great. Um, so we'll uh, we'll catch up again. Let me go ahead and check the calendar here real quick, and we'll confirm the dates with everybody. And uh, next month we'll do a better job of uh, getting the reminder out ahead of time. Uh, but we'll be meeting again on June fifteenth, Monday, June fifteenth, at uh, 12, 12 p.m. Pacific time, three p.m. Eastern. Um, so go ahead and mark that on your calendars if uh, if it's not there. But we'll get reminders out ahead of time. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Bye everyone. Good to see you all. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.